Fogo Briquettes test number two. Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host, Captain Ron. So last week you saw we did a video of our new briquettes and we went low and slow on a pork butt. And it turned out, ah, no, 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 I'm not telling you. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it. It's a great video. It's our number one test, it's right there, of our new briquettes. So today we're gonna do number two test. I wanna go a little bit hotter and faster. So I'm gonna take this chicken, we're gonna do what's called spatchcocking the chicken. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to say spatchcock. And we're gonna cook this a little bit hotter and faster. We're gonna go like 375 and see how this thing turns out. Our second briquette test, and I'm excited about it, baby. Briquette test number two is gonna be very interesting. So let me tell you a little bit about them if you did miss the first one, which is no excuse for that. But if you want some more information on this stuff, it's right up here, okay? So these things are made from coconut shells, the waste part of a coconut. That's all that they're made out of. They got some natural um, binders to hold them together. But other than that, that's it. So coconut shells tend to burn hotter, burn longer, and burn cleaner. So using them in a big green egg is kind of unique because the big rule is don't use briquettes in your big green egg. The chemicals will seep into the ceramics. It's gonna create too much ash. It's not gonna burn hot enough. Guess what? From what I can see so far, this solves a lot of those problems. So, can you use briquettes in a big green egg? We'll have to see. The one thing I can tell you is we kept our easy open bag. Ta-da! If you're not really sure what the difference between lump charcoal and briquettes are, let me explain to you. Our wood that we use for our Fogo lump charcoal is all comes from South America, from El Salvador. It's called Inga wood. And what it is, it's used to grow um, shade trees over the coffee plantations. We take all that waste trimming and we take that wood and we dry it in kilns. That's what our lump is. It's nearly, it's merely kiln dried hardwood. That's all, there's no chemicals, there's nothing else. It's dried in a kiln and that's what it is, it's just wood. These are a bit different. They're made from coconut shells, all right? This is all ground up coconut shells put together with natural binders, okay? No waxes and things like that holding these things together. So they're all natural. They're made of coconut and they're really dense, much denser than normal briquettes. So it's gonna cause it to burn longer. It's gonna make it burn cleaner. So these are ideal briquettes really. So we did low and slow. Now we're gonna do hot and fast. I'm curious to see how these work too. I'm learning with you. First things first, let's talk about our setup we're gonna use today. We're gonna go indirect with this chicken, but we are gonna go, like I said, hot. We're gonna go 375. So I'm take my kick ash basket, set that inside the egg. We're gonna fill that up with the, with the uh, briquettes here. Then we're gonna put our expander in and the grate right on top of that. So we're going indirect, and you'll notice that I wrapped this in foil, okay? The reason being is it protects it. Once those oils and everything drip down onto the convector, I, I feel personally that the oils soak in and it makes them crack. So we try and protect this and keep it cleaner. This way we just, when we're done, crumple up the aluminum foil, throw it away and let somebody else pick it up. It doesn't work that way. We're gonna light this in the same fashion that we always do. I'm gonna a little hole in the center here. Put my blazer ball down in there and light her up. We got our two Fogo natural fire starters in there. It'll light them up. Now, once it's good and burning a little bit, you can make your pyramid on top, okay? You wanna pile your charcoal over the top of it, just as if you were lighting a Weber kettle or anything like that, because you wanna get as much of these coals lit as possible. So we make a pile and a pyramid and let them burn its way up. One thing about our briquettes, the same thing. No lighter fluid ever. All right, now we're at 250 degrees and the temperatures are rising. So you can see we got a nice glow about them here. So I'm gonna use my cherry picker here, kind of spread these out a little bit. All right, give them a little room to breathe. We want to get this thing up to 375. So now we got a nice flat bed of charcoals and that should really spread quite nicely. Just because we're using different charcoal does not mean we're gonna change our cooking methods. So, like I said, this thing, the temperature's on the rise. It's up over 250 already. So we're gonna put our convector in here, all right. And our grate, we're gonna let this heat up with the grill because what's gonna happen is if we wait until the grill is at temperature and then put that in, as you probably know already, it's gonna cool the whole grill down. We don't want that, nope. We wanna cook it at 375 degrees. We want that stone heated up with it so that when we put it on there, it's ready to go. Now, while our grill is heating up, let's talk about what we're gonna cook. We're gonna cook us a chicken. So I got me a little, uh, a little about five and a half pound chicken here. It's just an oven roaster chicken. All we're gonna do is we're gonna spatchcock this thing, lay it out flat, put some basic seasoning on it, and cook it like that. We want it to do a full test to see how well this cooks, see how evenly it cooks, see how long it cooks. We wanna see the whole thing, how it does over briquettes, baby, how exciting. As you can see, I just sprinkle on the top. If you want to, you can take it, do it on the bottom, flip that chicken over, and put some on the bottom. I just wanna keep it real simple today. We're just trying to get this thing cooked. We're trying to do it with the briquettes. So I'm not worrying about seasoning it all over. It's gonna have plenty of flavor from this good stuff anyway. Yeah, you know you guys come visit our beautiful state of Florida all winter long and it's great for you to get away. 
This is the other part of the season. This is August in Florida. It is literally 112 degrees feeling with the humidity today. It's crazy. So don't tell me we don't love you. We're still making videos for you. All right, kids, we're at 375 degrees. So let's put our chicken on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna slide it right off of here onto our grate. How simple was that? Perfecto. Let's let her cook. So it's looking beautiful. We're rolling along here at 375 degrees still. You know, it took about, I would say 25 to 30 minutes to get our, our temperature where we wanted, probably closer to 30 minutes, up to 375. But once we got it there, man, I set those vents to my normal lump charcoal settings and it is staying right there at 375. We're about 45 minutes since, or more since we lit it, I would say, and it's still, it's holding perfectly steady. So, so far, I'm really happy with the performance. It's holding the way that I would hope that it would have done. So, let's keep going. So we've been going along for about an, oh, about an hour here now, so let's see where we're at. Oh, it's looking gorgeous. My God, that color is absolutely beautiful. And it smells fantastic. So we're at 175 in the thigh, we're at 150 in the breast. So we're gonna let it go for a little more. I'm gonna pull this when it hits 160 degrees in the breast and let it rest. The reason being, it's gonna carry over and continue to cook that extra five degrees to 165, which is our white meat finishing temperature on chicken. Okay, all you kids out there in Fogo land, good news, our chicken's at 165 degrees. Oh my God, I wish you could see this thing and smell it, it's so beautiful. So I'm just gonna simply pull it off here and put it on my cutting board, which is our barbecue prep tub. Oh my goodness, is that beautiful? Oh my, take a look at this. Is this thing gorgeous or what? Look at the beautiful color on this thing. The juices are already running. Oh my goodness, I think we may have a winner here. Let's see, let, let's let it rest for a little bit and then we're gonna see what it tastes like. Now, we just took this chicken off, so what I'm curious to see is I'd like to know how much charcoal we actually used. Look at that, okay, so it's got a good solid ember burnt, but those are still good usable coals actually. So, you know, we're gonna see if we can reuse those for next time. Let's take this and give it a little shake. These coals are still hot, okay? So we're gonna shake it. All right, I would have to say that that's really not much more ash than what I would see out of, uh, out of lump charcoal. So, not too shabby. The chicken looks beautiful. It smells beautiful. You can see we didn't use a ton of, of charcoal, which is all really cool. It's juicy as can be, but now for the ultimate is the test. Get the skin on there. Mm, I'm impressed. Now, I, I knew the chicken was good. I was hoping the chicken would be good. The flavor is absolutely there. The charcoal, I was afraid the briquettes would give a really different flavor. Nope, gives a really nice flavor. That's a delicious chicken right there. The charcoal, we didn't use a ton of it. It gave, it wasn't super smoky. Um, you could probably add some smoking woods if you want, but it's got a nice smoky flavor to it. I'll tell you what, you know, you were learning with me on these videos and I'm super impressed. This was pretty hot, 375 degrees. Um, what's left in there is amazing, but what's really amazing is the crispy skin, the juicy texture, everything. The charcoal burned beautifully. I've heard you can't use briquettes in a big green egg. I have to say, I'm starting to think that is wrong because this, if this is wrong, I don't want to be right, folks. That's fantastic. So the answer here is yes, you can use briquettes in your big green egg. No, it's not going to ruin it. Our, our briquettes do not have fillers and chemicals. It's not going to leach into your egg, I promise you. So anyway, Fogo briquettes, that's the way to go. While I got you here, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment. Have you ever used briquettes in your egg or in your Kamado cooker? Are you willing to try? I'd be curious to know. So, our briquettes right now are available at fogocharcoal.com or exclusively at all Ace Hardware stores. If they don't have it, ask them for it. They have it in their warehouses. So, I'd say this was a pretty good, successful first hot and fast run on our, on our briquettes. So we're gonna keep doing more and more tests. We're gonna see what else we can do with these briquettes. So, until next time, remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.